and welcome to the Here Come the Irish edition, Thanksgiving edition. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, especially my partner, Ryan Harris. How you doing, bud? Good, brother. Happy Thanksgiving to you. You got any big big traditions you do? Uh, no, you know, it's hard this year, bro. I mean, tradition goes out the window this season. COVID just spit all tradition out its own window, and we have to cope with whatever means we have. Uh, eating is a tradition, and I'm sure we all ate <laughs> on uh, on Thursday. Uh, I need to ask you, though, first week of the college football playoff poll, the CFP, and the Irish come in at number two. Thoughts? Well, most people don't know this, Vic, but every team that's been number two initially in the college football playoff poll since it began actually won the national championship. So really? I like this. I like being number two right now. I like it. I got to be honest. Wow, I did not know that. So it's sort of the 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 great position to be in because you're you're one step away from the top. You, you're yeah. not what everyone's shooting for, but at the same time, there you are. So let's take it a step further. And I hate to overlook North Carolina. Nobody's overlooking North Carolina. Do you think that the Irish have a good chance of staying in the top four of the college football poll, no matter what happens in the ACC championship game? I do uh, because the way that they beat Clemson, it's going to matter how that game goes. I mean, one, I really do believe they'll beat them again. Notre Dame was the superior team, you know, and you think about a fumble in the fourth quarter, or in the, I believe it was the end of the third quarter there by Ian Book right at the goal line and a false start on fourth down, fourth and one right on the goal line there. Uh, those two separate plays, I mean, that could be 14 points, and that's a very different game. So, I think Notre Dame will win that game, but if they lose, they have to make it close, and that way they will not fall out of the top four. Feels like forever since we last saw Notre Dame play a football game, but they're coming off that nice road win at Boston College. Pretty good quarterback, a former Notre Dame quarterback. But the quarterback they're facing this week, this North Carolina quarterback, um, I don't think it's, you know, with all due respect to DJ Ungalele, I think this quarterback is the best they will have faced all year. Well, this quarterback has no fear. And one of the things that North Carolina coaches have talked about is how he'll show up even before coaches to meetings and the facility because he really takes time to prepare, look over the opponent, and also watch film on quarterbacks he likes in, co in the NFL. So his entire process is different. And when you have the running backs that North Carolina has, Clark Lee's defense will have a tall task. But as what's happened every game this season, everybody's good until they play Notre Dame. So I'm looking forward to Friday afternoon. Well, what is it about Notre Dame that changes the way people play? Is, is I mean, defensively, clearly, Notre Dame's shown some great – in their tendencies defensively, they can get to the quarterback, number one, and they make plays. But I'm looking at, at Carolina's schedule. They played some high-scoring games, bro. They're coming off a Wake Forest victory, 59-53. to 53. What, are they playing seven-man football? Yeah, I don't know. And Wake Forest not a strong team. But one of the things you look at as well, and that's happened all season long for Notre Dame, is that offensive line for Notre Dame's offense really demolishes and destroys defenses. And as much gusto as they have for the game and as much energy as they have, I mean, they had three turnovers in the Boston College game and one handily. Uh, this team is built different. It's the most physical team I can remember seeing since my time at Notre Dame. And it's on both sides of the football. Well, having said that, two starting offensive linemen are out this week. First time this season that they've had offensive linemen uh, on the mend and had to go to the reserves. How how much of a concern is that? You know, not too much because Jake Lug has played at times this season. Uh, I'm sorry, Josh Lug. And I really like the way he plays. I think he's going to be the next kind of first-round pick, second-round pick lineman out of Notre Dame. But losing Jared Patterson is going to hurt you, of course. Um, but Notre Dame is built for this. One of the things that I talked with Coach Kelly about a couple of years ago was how the Alabama game, he learned that they didn't have the depth to compete with Alabama. Well, they've solved that problem now, and they've got great depth along the offensive line, and I believe it will show on Friday. Well, that's the beauty of having the, the deep offensive line. You can pick and choose and, and play different guys out there. But the fact that they're down to steady old linemen, do you think it changes – the way the the Irish play? Does it change their offensive play calling at all? I don't think so. I mean, one of the things that makes Notre Dame successful running the football is not just the offensive line. It's also Tommy Tremble and those tight ends that are really moving. Uh, Tom, you know, 
um, mm-hmm. Mayer as well, moving across the formation and hitting different players. So they've got a lot of pieces to it. And one of the plays I've really liked as of late is the Ian Book design run and Kyron Williams being the fullback. I mean, that's a tough one, two, three punch to stop. First the offensive line, then a tight end. And then, oh, by the way, the running back who you think has the ball is just hitting you in the mouth, sending your chin strap down and your face mask into your nose while the quarterback runs around you. And Ian Book also turns on offensively after he's run the football a little bit. So I think they'll start with that, get Ian Book comfortable, and then let Kyron Williams find the holes to carry them to victory. I know we have uh, the great uh, Chase Claypool waiting there for your interview a little bit later. So let's let's move on before we uh, look back at the Boston College game. Um, how impressed have you been with Ian Book the last few games? I mean, uh, to do what he did against Clemson and then his performance against BC, safe to say he's exceeded expectations a bit? You know, for many people, absolutely. I don't think they thought Ian Book had what it took to beat the to beat Clemson. But he came in and he and one of the things I love about him is that he's able to command the offense. And one of the things that Boston College I saw two weeks ago is Ian Book had an opportunity to panic, to yell at guys, to scream at guys. But for, instead of doing that, he just put the game on his back. He put the game on his shoulders. He ran, he directed guys, and he stayed calm, cool, and collected. And that has a total effect in that huddle. I mean, just think about being in a huddle. Vic, I'm so close to you. And I'm like, oh, okay, guys, come on. We got to go. We got to go. All right. Oh, one out scat. Zero, 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 flash. I'm on one. Versus, hey, here we go, boys. One play at a time. Zero out scat. Flash. I'm one. Ready, break. I mean, it's a total different way to engage. And everybody feels it, especially when you're in a huddle like you are on the field. Yeah, well, uh, the new Chase Claypool, I guess, is Ben Skoranek, who had three touchdown catches in that game. He was phenomenal. He was a beast. Notre Dame beats Boston College 45-31. I think the final score, a little closer than the game actually was. Notre Dame was in control for most of that second half. Let's take a look back at how the Irish tamed the Boston College Eagles. Look, get off, man, on the way to Boston. You know, everybody got their mask on. We locked in. Oh, boy, Kyle right here. My boy, we're we'll the best linebacker in the country. Oh, that's a video. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's all love, peace, happiness. Go. It's the renewal of the Holy War with Notre Dame. It's a homecoming for Boston area native Brian Kelly. His Irish arrived number two in the country. We're running today. <laughs> Sivo going crazy. Give it our own energy. Two, two, one, two, two. Yeah! 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 And the holy war is underway. Go ahead, juice, man. Juice, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's go, baby. Corner throw. For grabs for Skoranek. He caught it even with a flag down. Oh, oh, that's it open. That's weight room, baby. Weight room, baby. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hey, 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 now here's Sebo Flemister, and he's in the end zone for a Notre Dame touchdown. Let's go! Let's go! Was in trouble, got away again. Finds his man, oh, Scarlett, yeah, for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Take the field with intent! Take the field with intent! Oh, the snap was poorly timed. Dalen Hayes has it for the Irish. Let's go! We got their back! To the corner of the end zone for Skoranek again. We got that! 31 points and 327 yards of offense in the first half for Notre Dame. Kaiser. Jerkovic throws it right back into the hands of Jack Kaiser. Oh, 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 he did it! He did it! Let's go! Here's Sebo Flemister inside the 10, refusing to go down, and he almost got to the end zone. He's at the one. Oh, let's go, 2 0! Lemister, he remains the tailback. He follows Trimble and a touchdown. Three hours earlier. Sivo going crazy today. You already know that. 
predict the future. So another Holy War game is in the books. Brian Kelly has now won 100 games. It wasn't pretty, but we got the job done. One and all at the end of the day. Going into a bye week, let's go, man. Get some rest, and we right back at it, man. Finish this thing off strong. That's a win for the brotherhood, FTB. Big victory! Yeah! The game ball is going to go out to somebody that played hard, was physical, did all the things necessary to earn a game ball yeah. at the yeah. University of Notre Dame and at Seaball. Yeah! Where are those damn trophies that were so interested in us breaking? Yeah. 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 What a victory and great to see coach so excited. Always fun to get a trophy as well when playing for Notre Dame. Well, let's bring in our expert from the Observer to talk about the North Carolina defense, and he's Aiden Thomas. Aiden, how you doing this week, my friend? Ryan, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back on. Before we get to football, I'm a lineman, so what's a must-have in the Thanksgiving time at your household? Ooh, that's that's a tough one. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna be sitting down for the the UNC game with a huge plate of leftovers. But I gotta say, my go-to's are always uh, sweet potatoes and turkey. Keep it pretty classic. Yeah, man, I like it. I like it. Sweet potato pie is a must at the Absolutely. Harris House. Well, Aiden, let's talk about this North Carolina defense. Some people calling this a trap game for Notre Dame, considering they're coming off of the bye week. What do you see at first with this North Carolina defense? I don't even, you know, I don't know how you qualify as a, as a trap game with UNC being 19th in the last game's rankings. I think this is a clear cut, the second toughest game on the Notre Dame schedule behind that Clemson game. Um, the North Carolina defense is not the calling card of this roster, but they have had, they have flashed their um, upside. And a big, a uh, big thing for the Tar Heels is forcing turnovers. Um, they have six interceptions, and they have forced six fumbles. They've only recovered two of them, but they forced six fumbles on the year. And so that'll be I'm, – I'm, I'd imagine after three turnovers against BC, that's going to be something that Notre Dame was harping on is ball security and making sure UNC isn't coming and punching the ball out of Kyron Williams and any other Irish ball carrier's hands. Well, let's talk about some of those players who might try and do that. Who sticks out to you personnel-wise on defense? Yeah, absolutely. The North Carolina defense, it really lives and dies with their linebackers. Uh, so Chaz Surratt has five sacks and an interception. Jeremiah Gemmel has two sacks, two interceptions. And then you also see uh, the Fox brothers, uh, Taman and Tamari, and they've combined for eight and a half sacks as a linebacker and a defensive lineman. So those are the guys there. UNC likes to play aggressive, try to get in the backfield and really try to um, limit what opposing offenses can do. You'll see Don Chapman. He's kind of the guy in the secondary. He's a safety who comes up with a couple of interceptions here and there, but he's also forced two fumbles and had a few tackles for loss. So he's kind of their all purpose guy in the secondary who can also come up in blitz packages and really make a difference. Well, you said it's going to be the second toughest game after Clemson. What do you recommend the Irish attack on this North Carolina defense? Yeah, I think the good news for the Irish is I think a good way and a really solid way to attack the UNC uh, defense is something that the Irish have been very comfortable with. And that's, you know, starting with the ground game and then really opening things up with the slant game over the middle. And you've seen Notre Dame really open that up from whether it was the long pass to set up the game time touch and touch on Avery Davis over the middle. You've seen Michael Meyer on these countless short slant routes, making guys miss, running through guys. And then whether you got uh, Skronik or Javon McKinley coming in kind of that second layer of the defense. So opening up those slant routes are going to force those talented UNC linebackers to sit back a little bit more, not cheat up as much on the run. And that's going to let Kyron Williams, Chris Tyree, and of course, uh, last game's game ball winner, Sebo Flemister to really get to work. And we hope to see both healthy after that big game. He's Aiden Thomas. He's from the Observer. I hope you stuff your face and gain two inches on your waistline, my friend. All right. Well, I'll, I'll run it off after that, but I appreciate it, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks, Aiden. I'm Next, going. let's go to Coach Kelly talking about this North Carolina matchup and what his team needs to do to get ready. They're an extremely talented team. Um, we've played similar teams. Uh, Clemson obviously comes to mind. Uh as a equally uh, talented um, football team, uh, Travis Etienne, um, DJ at quarterback, uh, the wide receiving core. Um, so uh, some similar talented players, uh, you know, on the Clemson football team. Um, 
but you know, obviously, certainly uh, a really uh, deserving of all the accolades in terms of what they've accomplished. Um, and and they don't go away. I mean, they they have come back in in fourth quarters and um, won football games, and and they keep playing. Um, so it's it's an equally dangerous team in terms of the way they uh, they keep playing as well. Um, you know, from from our perspective, uh, we want to be who we are. You know, we want to be physical. We want to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. That's how we play. Um, and they're going to play how they play. We have to minimize big plays. I mean, look at, you know, obviously the the most important thing in this game is is who can keep the points down. <laughs> you know, if you look at their scores over the last few weeks, it's it's uh, it's big points. And so, you know, keeping the points down. So defensively, we've got to really do a great job of minimizing big chunk plays. Um, and and you start by you know, um, minimizing um, those and controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, they do a great job running the football. I think they're they're averaging maybe a yard per game more than we are in terms of running the ball. And so they run the ball equally as well. So this will be a great challenge for us and one that, you know, we're excited about and looking forward to. Yeah, Coach Kelly's right about the points. These are some of the uh, games and the points that the uh, Carolina Tar Heels have produced. 59 against Wake, 56 against Duke, 48 against NC State, 56 against Virginia Tech. This team can score in bunches. With more on the North Carolina offense, we welcome back Charlotte Edmonds, who is at her home. Where are you? In, in OKC, I believe. Is that what you told I me? I am in Oklahoma City. Beautiful. All right, so hey, uh, before we get into Carolina, Confirm for me, so you as students do not return to campus until January, correct? The, the semester's over. Actually, until February. Semester starts February 3rd. Oh, so no. We are gone. It's a 10-week break, almost as long as our regular semester, so which is pretty unusual. So the last time we spoke, you were probably in the middle of finals. Yes, that was right heading into finals week, so it was kind of our last week of classes, and then the bye week corresponded with our finals week thankfully. Um, and now we're off for 10 weeks. What a blessing for you getting to enjoy Thanksgiving without the thoughts of a, a final exam looming in the back. You know, you don't even have Absolutely. to worry about any of that stuff. It truly, I've never experienced a Thanksgiving like this where I'm <laughs> worried about a paper being written or something. So that is that is a silver lining in the midst of all this. All right, let's talk about that Carolina offense. Um, I, I think this quarterback, again, Trevor Lawrence didn't play against Notre Dame. Uh, I think this quarterback's the best quarterback they will face this season outside of Trevor. Absolutely. Could not agree more. You know, he's a sophomore, but he plays like he's belong he's been there his that whole time. Um he's put up twenty six hundred yards through eight games so far. He had a seventy six pass seventy six yard pass earlier this season. Brian Kelly said it earlier in his press conference this week that he has the best deep ball in the league. And to think that he's saying that in a league with Trevor Lawrence and with DJ Uyangalele and you know. Phil Dracovic and Ian Book, there's definitely some competition there, but he he loves to play in the pocket. But the fact is this North Carolina offense is so dynamic. They have the ability to be a threat on the run and um, in the passing game with Sam Howell at quarterback. So this will be a tough test for this Notre Dame defense. Yeah, you mentioned Sam Howell's also the Heels' third leading rusher. Now their top two rushers are two. I mean, you talk about a two-pronged attack. Javante Williams, 868 yards. Michael Carter, 807 yards. Take your, take your poison right there, right? They're the, they're the definition of a combo package. They yeah. can kill you up from both ends. Um, interestingly enough, Michael Carter, I believe, is um, – no, Javante Williams, actually, is currently leading the NCAA in touchdowns recorded, rushing touchdowns with 18. So, clearly, he's their primary ball car carrier in the red zone. Um, I think Notre Dame defense can expect to see him getting the ball – in that kind of crunch space, but both of them averaging are posting over 800 yards thus far. And truly they, I think they're averaging about seven yards per carry. So this will be a big test for that Notre Dame defensive line. All right, bottom line is here, Charlotte, what will the Notre Dame defense have to do to take Sam Howell and the Carolina offense out of its comfort zone? Well, it's funny you say that because I was actually reading a story in the athletic. Yes. That was just posted yesterday talking about how it was talking primarily about their offensive coordinator, but they like to play fast pace. His strategy, Phil, Phil Longo is fast pace, minimal mistakes, which is rather different than I think what a lot of the Notre Dame, uh, what a lot of teams have shown Notre Dame because in part, because 
they're they've given the defense such long breaks you know against Clemson that final stretch and that double overtime the defense hadn't hardly seen the field and then they go out and get back-to-back sacks and come out like a menace that I think this will be a different look they're going to be they're going to be worn down. So I think it's a matter of actually this might fall a little bit on the offense. You got to go put up points. You got to manage the game. You got to manage the time clock. And then from the defensive end, make Sam Howell beat you on the throw because he can, but you can't give it up. You can't give it to them both on the line and in the secondary. So force him to make some passes. I think you got to pack it in on Carter and Javante Williams. Charlotte, what are you going to do until February? Probably this. <laughs> I'm going camping in a few weeks, which I'm excited about. <laughs> so good. Enjoy yourself. And thanks for the insight as always, Charlotte. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, you too. Happy Thanksgiving, Charlotte. Up next, Matt Brown, head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels on what it would mean for that program to compete and to possibly even beat Notre Dame. Then this weekend, we've got uh, Notre Dame, number two in the country, uh, national game. We, we, we wanted to be relevant again. Uh, we're ranked uh, and Notre Dame's number two in the country, national TV game. We've got uh, uh, a great slot with uh, Kirk Kerbstreet, Chris Fowler, and Maria Taylor coming in. Um, so it is a relevant game. Uh, and um, Brian Kelly and I coached in an all-star game in 2003 out in Hawaii when he was actually the head coach at Grand Valley State. He was the coach of the year. Uh, and, and we've been uh, really good friends ever since. I'm so proud for him. Uh, this may be his best team because they're, they're very balanced. Uh, they do everything pretty well. Just checking a, a few things for them as uh, they're number one in the, the league in, in uh, total defense. So when, at a year where we're saying a lot of people miss defense and we didn't have spring practice, so that hurt us. And the offenses are ahead of the defense. Well, Notre Dame didn't get that memo because they're giving up 85 yards rushing a, a game. So they're, they're so good on defense. Uh, um, but interestingly enough, we're seventh in our league uh, on defense, and uh, we're sixth against the run in our league. And, and we can improve so much, but it just shows you that our, our league has struggled some on defense as we look at where we are. Uh, we're total offense. We're number one in the ACC and, and – um, Notre Dame is number three, but more uniquely, both Notre Dame and us have rushed for 233.5 yards per game. I don't think I've ever seen a, a stat that's, uh, uh, that, that's like that, but uh, uh, should be a fun game, uh, should be a great game. I know our guys are, are really looking forward to it. And Notre Dame is national. It gives us a chance to see where we fit. Well, let's hope you don't fit Coach Mac Brown. And I like how he was there giving all the props to the media that he could to start it off. Hey, one of my favorite times in my NFL career was playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers and, and seeing the legends of Rocky Blyer and Jerome Bettis. And my next guest is a current Pittsburgh Steeler continuing the tradition of excellence that Notre Dame brings to Pittsburgh. He was last year's MVP for your Iris. He leads the Steelers in receiving yards and touchdowns with eight. Please welcome the man, the myth, the legend, the rookie taking the league by storm, Mr. Chase Claypool. Chase, my man, great to talk to you again. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. Well, let's just start with the new news that has come out. You guys now at the Steelers have had your second game pushed back due to COVID. And Chase, a lot of people are leaders that watch this show here at Notre Dame. What's been you and the Steelers' mentality when facing such a changing schedule in this pandemic era? Yeah, obviously we've been kind of affected by this probably more than anyone in the league, um, having one of the earliest bye weeks that we've had, uh, and then having to move the Titans game, and then having to move this game, uh, especially on a primetime game. You know, you kind of hate to see that, and it gets moved to Sunday at 1. So um, definitely annoying because it messes with our practice schedule and how we prepare. But, um, you know, that's 2020, and uh, it's something we have to be ready for. Well, you punished the last team that made you take that bye week uh, who faced you afterwards. And I love, Chase, you, you probably don't know this, but a lot of us at Notre Dame were watching that first Pittsburgh Steelers game to see your action. And you've sealed the win by getting a first down and getting down inbounds like a Notre Dame man and, and player does. But what was it like to put on pads for the first time in four years of different colors? 
Yeah, no, it was definitely weird. Um, you know, having the all black on the all black uniforms, um, um, with the color rush coming up and then, you know, the white and black and yellow and gold. So it was, it was just a weird situation to be in putting on a different helmet for the first time, having worn gold, a gold helmet for the last four years. So it, it, it's different, but, uh, it definitely feels nice. Feels right. What's been your favorite touchdown so far this year? Um, I think my first one for sure. Um, you know, I, I was smiling the whole way into the end zone. So that's, that's one I'll never forget. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Now, every rookie has a welcome. Hey, rookie, welcome to the NFL moment. For me, it was in practice. A guy was nice to me at breakfast and then tried to break my face mask during practice. Like, oh, my gosh, you got to play every snap, even in practice. What was your, hey, rookie, welcome to the NFL moment, either practice or a game? Uh, yeah, I think it was the Baltimore game when I fumbled on the first play I was in, um, especially after, like, talking about ball security that whole week. Oh, luckily I was able to bounce back uh, at the end of the game there, but that was definitely like um, definitely my welcome to the NFL moment. Yeah, I know Coach Tomlin says you carry the hopes and dreams of the of the team when you carry that football. But what has made you come? What what made you come back? Not just in that game, but you also used that perseverance throughout your career. Where does that come from? Yeah, I don't really let one play affect another. Like uh, if you do that, man, you know every other play after that's going to be going to be affected. So this is the mindset that I've kind of built over the last few years. Um, you know, I, I make a mistake and I forget about it. And if someone wants to talk about it, then I'm not interested. Um, it's just something that I've built through trial and error, I'd say. Well, I love it. I love it. Now, one of the things that most people don't know, you've kept close contact with this year's team. I saw you briefly as you were walking out as they played Pitt in Pittsburgh. But what's it been like talking to the guys now that you're in the NFL? What are those conversations like? Yeah, I told them the exact same thing I just said now uh, to the receiver group. I said, you know, if you drop a pass, you fumble, you do anything, um, don't let that one play affect another. And I think, um, you know, I think I saw that came to light when I was watching the Clemson game uh, when ben, Benny Sko, he dropped that fourth down pass, I believe, on the dig route. Uh, and then he came back and made some huge plays. So, um, just little things like that. Anything I can do to help, um, you know, I'm always glad to. Now, one of the things we need to talk about as well, in addition to your success, is how you've changed over from being, you know, that Notre Dame standout to now you're standing out in Pittsburgh. But before you continue your success in the NFL, what are some of your favorite memories as a Notre Dame football player when you think back on your career at Notre Dame? Yeah, I think the the entire 12 and 0 season uh, was super cool. Um, my first snap in college uh, at Texas that was definitely uh, super cool. And then probably the Citrus Bowl win, uh, just the last game, uh, just because I remember being off the bench the entire game, watching every snap and and try to take that all in and um, having the confetti rain down was uh, pretty special. All right, a couple of quick ones to you for the end here. Now, you know Alejandro and Dave DeCastro are my boys, so I'm going to ask you this, man, before before they find out. Do you have a Christmas gift ready for them? You got to help your lineman, man. You got to feed him, get him some gifts there, Santa Claus. Yeah, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't planned anything crazy. I'm still trying to get a feel for him, but uh, Big Al's my uh, spike ball partner, so we'll <laughs> see if uh, I can get him, like, maybe, like, a canvas of a spike, uh, us playing spike ball or something. That'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah, he's one of the smartest guys ever. Now, it's the holiday season. What are some holiday traditions in the Claypool family? Yeah, our family always got together for Thanksgiving. Our Thanksgiving is a lot sooner than you guys'. It happened, I think, a couple months ago, September, I believe. Um, but we just all get together at my grandma's house. Um, we play card games. Uh, we do charades. That's probably one of our um, traditions. And then we eat, we eat a good meal. Lastly, what has the support of the Notre Dame community meant for you, not just in your career in, in, at Notre Dame, but now in the NFL as well? Yeah, you know, I still have former coaches reaching out to me, support staff reaching out to me, um, you know, all these different resources, professors reaching out to me and just, you know, wishing me well and saying they supported me. I think it's super, super good to have that support when you're, you know, away from where you're comfortable from. Uh, away from home. I think it's just good to have people knowing that people are there for you and that people are supporting you. Well, and you're making the people proud, my friend. He is Chase Claypool. Chase, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule 
and good luck on your continued success in the NFL. Appreciate you. Next, let's turn to Vic's picks, your favorite part of the show. Vic. Do this, Ryan. I got my own sound effects now. Everybody likes Vic's picks because everybody likes free sweatshirts, and we gave a bunch of them away after the Boston College game. Congratulations to Sal Lachese, Dan Turner, Steve Finelli, Jim Leonard, Meredith Holland. You all won. Here come the Irish sweatshirts for beating me in Vic's picks. Pretty easy to beat me. We make our selections. If you garner more points than I do, you walk away with a sweatshirt. And it's uh, whether Notre Dame will win or lose, how many offensive yards the Irish will produce, and will they cover the spread? Then we'll see if you can give us a final score just for fun. We begin this week. uh, Let's see who's on the list first. It is from the Soren Society, Brian May. Brian May, class of 91. Fellow class of 91, Brian May. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Vic. How are you tonight? I'm great, my friend. Where did you live? I lived in Grace, the non-dorm. So wait a minute. You know, I was so envious of those of you who lived in the towers because I was always a sports fan, obviously. We didn't have cable television. You guys were the first to get cable television in the entire Notre Dame campus. What did you do with that gift? <laughs> It, it was it was actually a pretty good place to live. I, I think actually, you know, the traditional Notre Dame crowd looked down on us, <laughs> even though we were up in the tower. But uh, it, it was it was a good uh, a good place to live. We had AC too, so we yes, had did. Of discomfort uh, that went along with living in those other cool dorms. Well, I, I would take the snide remarks and all that business to have AC and cable television. You lived the good life. The rest it, of us, it was not a bad deal. All right. Um, what do you think this week? Give us your um, give us your predictions. Uh, will Notre Dame win? How many yards? All that business. Well, I, I of course the Irish are going to win. I mean that 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 is a pretty easy call for me. I um, mean I like this team. They're really strong. I, I, I think the score is going to be <clears throat> reasonably close. I'm, I'm, I have it down at thirty four twenty. So obviously that means they're going to cover. Right. Uh, and then I think they're going to get somewhere north of four hundred yards. I put down four hundred fifteen. I, I just think this team is strong. And I think they're going to handle themselves well. They know what's on the line, and they're going to perform. You're not worried about Carolina being such a high-scoring team. 20 points seemed like a, oof, holding them to 20. I know, I know I'm out there on the skinny branches with that one, Vic. Yeah. But I, I believe in this D, and I think they're going to rise to the occasion. Can you tell us about that? Uh, what is that, an IBM Selectric 2 behind you? What is that wonderful it's type? Smith Corona Galaxy 12. I get a lot of questions about it, but it, it was uh, collecting dust in my in-law's uh, basement. I thought that would make a nice conversation piece in my office, and clearly it, it, it does make a nice conversation piece. Brian, we, we arrived at Notre Dame when the transition was being made from typewriter to computer. Do you remember going to the LaFortune Center, the, the, the basement there, and we had those box Macintoshes where we had to write our papers and all that? Yes, I do. In fact, that was one of the first major purchases I made is I bought my own Mac II. Did you really? Uh, plus, yeah, I had the box on my the Mac the the Mac Plus box with no yeah. hard drive. I had two floppy disk drives, which made it pretty high end at the time. Do you realize how many times I wrote a paper and then failed to save it properly at the I, end, right? Yes. And yeah. you leave there after hours of work and you have nothing to show for. Yes, it. I've been there. I've been there, and I, it, it didn't it didn't work any better in your dorm room if you didn't save it. <laughs> well, it, was, it, was, it was pretty brutal when that happened to you. <laughs> Brian, thanks for your picks, buddy. Good luck to you. Good, yeah, thanks. All right, coming up next, it's a repeat uh, performer on our show. It is Father Pete McCormick, Director of Campus Ministry. We always give this to our repeat guest, Father. Congratulations. Thanks, Vic. How you doing? I'm good, man. How about yourself? How quiet is campus right now? Campus is really quiet. Um, um, you know, students all left this weekend, and uh, so now it's 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 – it's uh, strange to have so little kind of engagement in this in this period of time and and to think about what December is going to look like also. So we're all kind of leaning into this a little bit and, and learning from it. Yeah. Wow. It's almost, uh, again, two months straight of no yeah. campus activities outside of the summer. That's just a weird phenomenon, but it is what it is. All right, Father, let's not waste any time here. What are your predictions? OK, so the, the Irish get a W here for sure. Okay. Um, I think we're gonna hit the spread, obviously, and then uh, total total yards about three seventy five, um, and then the final score uh, thirty three 
24 in favor of the Irish. Again, you're another guy who believes that North Carolina won't produce points against this Notre Dame defense. That's- yeah, I just, I've seen – I mean, I just, I've just seen how we've conducted our affairs against other elite programs, and, and I'm confident that at this point in the season that our de- defense is going to take this as a challenge and really get it done. Hey, last question. This is completely off subject. Uh, we talk about COVID and coping with the, the virus itself. Yeah. Um, how difficult – you're a priest, and I'm sure you've done a lot of confessions. Just the mental well-being, the mental health of students. Um, how, how different has that yeah. been? Yeah, I think it's a real question. And, and uh, confessions aside, because that gets me into a little bit of hot water if I start bringing that up. Yeah. Um, but the uh, generally in terms of conversations with folks, sure. um, it, this, is a, this is a real challenge. You know, like the stress of a pandemic. And then on top of uh, Notre Dame is already challenging from an academic standpoint. So you take the the normal rigors of learning in a top 20 institution and then apply that in the context of a a pandemic. Um, And then everyone's kind of making their way through it the first time. There's always going to be challenges that we're facing. And so I I can say that the students did a great job of voicing their their needs. And, And I think we as an institution were great at anticipating some and catching up when appropriate. So um, we all learned a whole heck of a lot over the course of the fall semester and getting ready for the spring is going to be really important. Well, Father, I think I speak for everyone. Thank you for doing what you do and have a happy Thanksgiving weekend. Thanks, Vic. Right all back right. at you, man. Take care. Uh, up next, uh, representing the Rockney Athletics Fund, class of 84, Dale Frank is on Here Come the Irish. Dale Frank, how you doing, buddy? Hey, not too bad, Vic. How about yourself? I'm great. Is that your Notre Dame room at home? Yes, it is. Beautiful. So, oh, is it in your, so they threw you in the basement. They said, you're going to all do all Notre Dame activity in the basement. <laughs> and that's what my wife said, yes. <laughs> okay, what do you think this week? Oh, I like the Irish this week, 38-27. Definitely win, definitely cover the spread, 490 yards total offense. Why so confident? Well, I think the bye week's going to help. They're going to get rested. They're done with exams, so, so that'll be good. Uh-huh. Um. And I really think that uh, we're going to minimize the uh, the number of possessions during the game. A lot of eating the clock off on offense, not very many possessions. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to make the most of them. Now, you're reporting from Ohio. So the great state of Ohio, obviously, Buckeyes fans. How do those Buckeye fans feel about being ranked behind the Irish in the CFP? Don't like it one bit. Yeah, I'm they sure they do not like it. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Let them know about it, too, would you? Oh, <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Man, Good luck. You hope you win a sweatshirt. Hey, thanks. Take care. Have a nice day. Uh, representing the John Cardinal O'Hara Society, Ryan Bernard joins us all the way from Medford, Oregon. Ryan, how are you? I'm great, Vic. How are you doing? Where are you located right now? What uh, part of the, Are you at the office? I'm at the office. I am actually at the office. I am a principal at a Catholic school down here in Southern Oregon, and uh, I figured I would come in where I've got my Notre Dame – year and that is so cool what's the 22 on the over your right shoulder there what oh so uh my my grandfather owned a couple of furniture stores in ohio and he had a little barnstorming basketball team so that's just one of the old bernard's jerseys right there but also notre dame green that is so cool did you always want to be a principal you know i i, I kind of like a lot of people stumbled into education a little bit i was a coach and an english teacher first and uh just stuck around long enough to uh get the opportunity to try a few other things beautiful what did you what do you do you still coach uh i do a little bit yeah when i can i actually helped with the football team a couple of years ago coaching offensive line and then this past year i coached some eighth grade basketball just a cool. pinch hit where they need a little help so there's nothing more gratifying than coaching. I absolutely love it. It is so fun. All right, so what do you like this week? What do you think? Will Notre Dame win? How much? Well, of course. Notre Dame's going to win, and I'm right in line with uh, Dale Franck there. I said 38 to 27, uh, same score. So they're obviously going to cover the spread. And uh, 479 yards offense. I think this will be, uh, you know, there'll be some fireworks. Both these teams can move the ball and score a bit. And uh, obviously Notre Dame is going to get it rolling offensively. Hey, I love fireworks. Give me some more fireworks, the better. We need something. We need fireworks in this COVID season. There you go. There All right. you go. Why wait till Thanks, the first Ryan. July? Thanks for what you do, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Uh, representing now the Order of St. Thomas More, uh, class of 80, Lynn Schubert. Uh, who have, is Lynn with somebody, too? Does Lynn have a guest? Who, who's your guest there, Lynn? Lynn does have a guest. Lynn has her mom as a guest. She's my... Notre Dame football fan, 
we usually aren't together, so we have to watch the games together and text back and forth, and this time we're going to get to watch it together. What is your mother's name? Marty. Marty, very nice to meet you. Welcome to Here Come the Irish. Thank you very much. It's nice to uh, see you. You can help escort uh, Lynn through this and help us with the picks here. Lynn, what do you like? So are we going to win? Well, of course. <laughs> of course <laughs> we're going to win. <laughs> That's easy. Okay, so they're going to win. You have a final score of 38-31. They will cover the spread, 458 yards of offense. Why are you so confident? I'm such a huge fan of defense, and I have so much belief in our defense. I think they're absolutely extraordinary. But when you put their – you put that quarterback of theirs and Javante Williams on the field, I think we're going to see a lot of points one yeah. way. And the other way, and yes. we're going to come out on top. By the way, you're in the nation's capital there. What a beautiful view. What, what, what do you have behind you there? Oh, that is so sweet. I'm so sorry. I'm not in the nation's capital. Oh, I came not. down to Florida to be with my mom. I'm oh. normally in the nation's capital. Oh, I'm, I, I, I don't want to be at home, but that's the intracoastal waterway. Oh, I thought that was like a big national monument behind you or something. It's a big blue Christmas tree, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's wonderful privilege that you and your mother get to spend Thanksgiving weekend together, and we appreciate bringing mom on board for your pick. Thank you so much. It's it is an honor being together. All right, good. Best of luck to you, and have a great Thanksgiving weekend. Thank you. All right. Uh, up next from uh, Park Ridge, Illinois, class of '81, Don Ginocchio. Jo uh, Don will join us now on Here Come the Irish. Don, what's hey. up, bud? Hey, Vic, you said that name perfectly. Thank you. Hey, I'm a paisan, man. Come on. I figured you'd get it right. <laughs> Some of them might get it wrong. Is that, is that your Notre Dame room? Uh, actually, my Notre Dame room is two hours away in Indiana, so I, I have a makeshift. I put the flag up and got the band uh, sweatshirt out uh, to represent the uh, band alumni. You, all right, so what was your history with the band? I was a drummer, uh, percussion in all the bands, obviously marching band, uh, it's a special connection to the football program, and it was it was great four years to be there. I saw a lot of great games. Don, what was the highlight of your Notre Dame experience when you were there? Well, we won the national championship against yeah. Texas in the Cotton Bowl. That is probably the highlight. I mean, there were a lot. Were you at that game? I mean, you got to see. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the March March minutes. So I was at all the bowl games during those four years, and I got to see the chicken soup game with. Joe Montana, we froze our butts off. Excuse me. How, how cold was it? Because people don't understand. At the Cotton Bowl, it can get chilly, and you don't expect it. That's why it's so cold. Yeah. Vic, it, you know, I'm from the Chicago area, and I, I know winter, but there was a two-inch thick ice on, on the seats when we went into the stadium that morning. Um, and, uh, we, I mean, it, it was bad. It was really, really cold, especially for people that weren't used to it. Well, it's not going to be that cold this weekend in Carolina. What do you like? What are your What are your uh, predictions this weekend? I'm glad I'm competing against you and not some of your call, Dale or Ryan. <laughs> They're very similar. Uh, I have us winning, covering the spread. I picked 40 to 28 for the score. I think there'll be a lot of offense and just uh, you know, I, this, there's patterns now for both these teams, and I, I see us getting about 480 yards to generate 40 points. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll score a lot on them and. Um, they haven't faced the defense quite as good as ours, I think. So we'll, we'll keep them under their average. Yeah, when you see that Wake Forest put 53 on the Carolina defense, it gives you a lot of hope that Notre Dame will put up points. That's for darn sure. Yeah, and yeah, we're going to score. I mean, we have, we, this will be one of those games you're going to need to outscore them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I expect we will. Don, great picks. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. Thank you, Vic. Thanks for right. Take care. And last but not least, representing the Kavanaugh Council from the class of 88. The last national championship, Mary Trotter. Mary, were you, were you at that 88 Fiesta Bowl? No, I wasn't there. I had just graduated, but I had lots of friends that went and brought me souvenirs and things. So, <laughs> But at least you recall it, right? You remember everything okay. about it. Oh, for sure. Yes, definitely. Every bit. <laughs> All right. So what do you like this weekend against North Carolina? Okay. So I have obviously Notre Dame winning, covering the spread. 600 yards. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Wow, wow, wow. Well, 52 to 28. Well, I talked to my son, who's a 2012 graduate. Isn't that funny? We both are. That's well, he didn't. We didn't win the national championship, but we went. Yeah. Um, and he said 600 because um, in talking to him about it, North Carolina has not a great defense, but a really good offense. Yeah. 
So we think there's going to be a lot of exchange back and forth. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And Notre Dame sure. has a great, great offense. The passing attack has really picked up. So that's why. I hope we get there. Mary, can, you, can I tell you how jealous I am right now? I, I'm in Denver, Colorado. I'm looking out my window, and there's four inches of snow on the ground. Uh, it looks absolutely wonderful where you live. It's going to be a gorgeous day tomorrow. We're going to have Thanksgiving right outside, right where we're sitting. Just a very small, my immediate family, which I'm really bummed about, but that's what we're doing. So does the whole family get together for the game? Um, on Friday? Yeah, we could. We could sit well, right out and watch it. Yeah, well, you know, a, a game day is always special. It all depends on how you watch the game. And and I like, I believe it or not, I like to watch it with the fewer amount of people as possible. I got to listen. I have to hear everything that's said. I'm just one of those weirdos like that. So no, I, I don't know how you like it. No, I like it both ways. I love hearing it. I love being with other people. The Clemson game was so much fun. We had. Oh, my uh, goodness. Are you kidding me, Mary? Biggest, that was the best ever. Mary. Like eight people. So it was fun. Did you really? Well, listen, yeah. enjoy the family. Have a great Thanksgiving weekend and go Irish. Thank you so much. Go Irish. All right. Take care. All right. So all of those contestants will compete against my picks. If you uh, gather more points than I do, obviously you win the sweatshirt. Here's what I think this weekend. And I always go the conservative route. Uh, I do this for many reasons because I just, I freak out over things. And I see that North Carolina offense and I know they're going to produce points. So I think it's going to be 35-31. I don't think the Irish will cover the spread. And again, North Carolina could arrive at 31 points many different ways. I'm not saying that it's going to be close throughout the game, but I just don't think the spread is coverable. Uh, I think the Notre Dame offense will do its part with 495 yards of offense. That will not be hard to come by. And I think Ian Book will prove once again why he's one of the best quarterbacks in the game today. He's 28-3 and as a starter, for crying out loud. How many times are people going to doubt Ian Book? With that said, take a look at this video on the ascent of one Ian Book. They call it the Book of Ian. Virginia Tech up 2014 with 35 seconds left. Drops back. Going to keep it himself across the 10. Five. Oh, around the corner. Touchdown, Ian Book. Pressure. Book steps up. End zone shot for Davis. Avery. Fought for it. Caught it. Notre Dame touchdown. Wow. Shot in the third, but it's Book back to pass. Looks to his left. Keeps it himself across the five. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Throws underneath, complete at the five, and into the end zone, touchdown, Michael Mayer. Notre Dame dials up, but scrambles, lower the shoulder, reach for the pylon, and in for the touchdown, and the Irish are back on top. Steps into the throw, up for grabs, oh, and caught, Ben Skoranek on his way. Rolling out to his right, pass to the end zone, is caught, oh. 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 Minute 14, two timeouts left, Irish down seven. Clemson shows pressure. Here they come with five. It's picked up and Book's going to take that shot. Now goes Avery Davis. 20. Davis 10. First and goal for the Irish at the five. Third and goal for Notre Dame. Book on the roll. He throws it. And it is caught for the touchdown by Davis. Second and goal from the 13. Book was in trouble. Got away again. Finds his man. Touchdown. Wow, this is so good by Ian Bullard. Man gets better every week. We bring back Ryan Harris. Hey, let's um let's play pretend for a little bit. Let's say the Irish make us all very proud and happy, and they go on to win the national title this year behind the arm of Ian Book. Where is Ian Book's name? What does it rank in Notre Dame lore? In your eyes. Well, he's broken a lot of the records. He's one of the um, only quarterbacks to match the rushing yards, you know, to have the second most rushing yards behind, you know, Tim Brown. I mean, these are the kinds of players we're talking about. He's going to have the most passing yards behind Brady Quinn. He's going to have 
the most touchdowns, um, probably second or third in touchdowns by the end of his career. And here's the thing. He could come back next year. No, you know, because of the pandemic, this is not a wasted year of eligibility for Ian Book. So he's going to have some tough questions about whether or not he wants to come back to Notre Dame or not. But how about how long that book was of Ian Books? I mean, sure. come on, Vic. I mean, you and I, we got, what, four or five chapters, maybe? <laughs> well, not many uh, quarterbacks get that many reps as a starter uh, on this team. Usually there's somebody behind them anxious to play, ready to play. Normally those guys go on to the NFL. You mentioned coming back for another year. Ian just got an invite to the Senior Bowl where scouts are going to get a chance to look him over. What would prompt him to come back for another season? Well, I, I – it will depend a lot on what information his agent gets. Now, for a lot of people who don't know, that senior bowl is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, that means you're a top 100 guy. You're expected to go in that second round or early third. So it's a very big honor to be named to the Reese's uh, senior bowl there. But there are going to be questions about his height. There are going to be questions about the stretch of time last year where he didn't perform in the Michigan game where he didn't play well. But the best thing Ian Book has done is performed at each and every moment this year. And that's why this week at North Carolina, again, he'll find the team on his shoulders as he can lead the way to what you mentioned, a national championship. And if he does that, at the end of the day, say whatever you want about his height. But he's a winner who's played in big games against top competition. And those things get you paid in the next level. All right, Ryan, you're going to be calling the game this weekend. How do you see this game unfolding? I see this as one of the toughest matchups for Notre Dame. A couple, even a couple weeks into the season uh, with the success that North Carolina was having, and I know the type of coach Mac Brown is. He recruited me when he was at Texas. Uh, this is going to be tough, and I think it's going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be 42 to 35, Notre Dame. Yeah, I agree with you. I had at the beginning of the season when I looked at the schedule, this was earmarked as the second toughest game on the schedule for me uh, yeah, simply it, because Carolina can put up points. Do you see a high scoring game then? Do you, do you see a crazy – whoever scores last wins type of game? I really do because it's not just about the fact that, you know, Notre Dame can score, but Sam Howell, the quarterback for North Carolina, he'll take deep shots. And as we saw in games that even Boston College, this recent game against Notre Dame, every team can create their story by beating Notre Dame. And they're going to take shots downfield. So one of the things I love that Clark Lee has said at different times, whether it's the Clemson game or the Boston College game, is that we've got to absorb the blows and then regroup and finish the game. They've done that so far. I trust they will. But And as Coach Kelly mentioned, they do come back late at game. So it could be 42 to 17 for a while, and then they get a couple of touchdowns. But this will be their biggest test. And But after this, Vic, I really don't see an issue on the schedule until that ACC yeah. championship game. All right, last one. I, I, you called the Ohio State game last weekend during the bye, correct? That's right, Ohio All State right. and Indiana. So did you get a chance to mentally evaluate how Notre Dame – I mean, you always do this. You watch another product, and you're like, all right, how would, how would Notre Dame match up? Did, did you do that? Did you do that comp as you're watching that game? Of course. What, yeah. are, we in, what, are, we, what are we here? I mean, I'm a Notre Dame graduate. you know. And this Ohio State team is not uh, what they were in the past. They do have deep threat capability. But if Notre Dame gets a chance against Ohio State, I really believe Notre Dame would win that game. Their defensive line is not extremely well as long as they have been in the past with the Bosa brothers and things like that, and Chase Young, they kind of don't have that guy this year. Um, and their secondary does give up big plays. So if Notre Dame wins its way into that situation, I'm very confident about that. And, Vic, uh, you'll hear me on the Sunday night broadcast with Westwood One for the Kansas City Chiefs-Denver Broncos. So I'll do the wow. Syracuse game at Notre Dame. And then I'll jump over and do some NFL the next day for two teams well, I played for. You, my goodness, you are you go national, my man. Don't grow too fast. I don't want to lose you. I'm trying to be like you, man. You're the hardest working man in show business. <laughs> well, I'm thankful for a lot of things this Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, among them, doing a show with Ryan Harris, man. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure doing this with you every week. Vic, I love you, brother. I learn from you all the time, and and I love all of you who joined us for these shows. Uh, we are ND, and it's a wonderful family to be a part of. And with that, we uh, bid farewell with a uh, group of Notre Dame students performing uh, for good in front of the Golden Dome with a little surprise you might recognize here. We say thank you. We'll see you next week on Here Come the Irish.
said that people come into our lives for a reason, bringing something we must learn, and we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them and we help them in return well i don't know if i believe that's true but i know i'm who i am today because i knew you like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes the sun like a stream that meets a boulder way through the wood and who can say if I've been changed for the better because we knew you we have been changed for good it well may that we will never meet again in this lifetime so let me say before we part so much of me is of what I learned from you you'll be with us like a handprint on our hearts and now whatever way our story I know you have rewritten ours by being our friend Like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind off the sea Like a seed dropped by a sky bird in a distant wood And who can say if I've been changed for the better I do believe we have been changed for the better because we knew you because we knew you we have been changed